This is Stacy Eldridge. Welcome to Captivated. This world vies for our attention in a thousand different ways. But the most important thing, the preeminent thing, the essential thing, is to give our attention to Jesus. Hello, friends. Stacy here. And once again, I am so happy to be with you today. Thanks for joining in. Again, it's my prayer that this time that we get to spend together just brings you life. I'm going to dive right in. As you know, our first and primary calling is to know Jesus, to press in, to believe him, and then to receive his lavish, abundant, oh my goodness, depth of it, love. So here's my prayer that you are familiar with. It's Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Yes and amen. Being filled to the fullness of the measure of God means that we are living in union with Christ. And union with Christ is the goal of Christianity, oneness, being saturated by his love, knowing his heart, praying what he prays, doing what he does, saying what he says, being engulfed in unwavering belief, which leads to peace in our souls regardless of our circumstances and a joy in our hearts that is based on nothing but the love of God and our immovable position in his heart. We have the privileged position, friends, as the beloved of God, holy and chosen in his sight, to be transformed into his very likeness. We are being made holy, sanctified, and becoming like him, reflecting Christ in all he says and does. And the first thing that Jesus does is love his Father. He trusts him. He knows the immovable position he holds in his father's heart. He is loved. He is engulfed in love, saturated by it, swimming in it, immersed in it at all times. In John 17, 23, Jesus prays to the father. He says, you have loved those you gave me just as you have loved me. Okay, hear that again because this is revolutionary. You have loved those you gave me, that's us, just as you have loved me. Other versions say, you loved them just as you loved me. You loved them even as you have loved me. You loved them just as much as you loved me. Oh. I know if you're anything like me. (laughs) This is hard to grasp. This is more love than we can imagine. No wonder the Apostle Paul prayed that we might know a love beyond all knowing, a love that surpasses knowledge. Friends, God sent his Holy Spirit into our hearts to help us live in God's love and boldly pray, Abba, Father, Abba is a term of endearment to a father. It means daddy, papa. It's a name reserved for a cherished child. A stranger doesn't get to call him that. You may remember that I have grandchildren. My grandmother name is Mia. It means mine or my in Spanish. I chose to be called that because I belong to my grandchildren, and I want them to rest in that truth. I am theirs. No one else gets to call me Mia, but them. 
they can call it out. Hey, mine. And I come running. It's a precious name, a separate name, if you will. It's a privileged name reserved for them. We have the same intimacy with our father, our Abba, our Papa. Timothy Keller reminds us, the only person who dares to wake up a king at 3 a.m. for a glass of water is a child. We have that kind of access. It is such a wild thing and almost unfathomable. It's an unfathomable truth. That's a hard thing to say, unfathomable. Hard to believe truth that we can have the same intimacy with our Father as Jesus does. We have the same access to his heart. We have the same privileged position as his sons and daughters. We are loved with the same crazy love. We call his name and he comes running. This is something God wants us to be certain of, to know for sure. God loves us with the same love that he loves Jesus. Not just kind of like he does or a bit like he does, but the same love, the same amount of love, the same wholehearted, I am well pleased with you. You are my beloved child. Love Oh, to let that sink in. Because as it does, our hearts rise in love in return. Jesus says in Zephaniah 3, 17, this is the amplified version. It says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love, making no mention of your past sins. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Another version says, the Lord your God among you is powerful. He will save and he will take joyful delight in you. In his love, he will renew you with his love. He will celebrate with singing because of you. Friends, Jesus is right now singing over us with shouts of joy. He takes great delight in us. In Song of Songs 2.14, it says, Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. He wants us to look at him, to gaze at him. He wants to see us. He wants us to speak to him, talk to him, praise him. He calls our voices sweet and our face is lovely. Our face is handsome. Our voice and our face are pleasing to him. Song of Songs 2, 4 says, his banner over me is love. He covers me with love. God wants us to receive his love, recognize his wooing, and respond to his romancing of our heart. So first we come to know his love increasingly. And then we respond by loving him in return. We love because he first loved us. In odd love, we worship him. We exalt him. We give him first place in our hearts just as we are first place in his. And then in love, as part of our response, we partner with him in bringing his kingdom to whoever and wherever and however he asks. It's such an honor. And that partnership will look differently for all of us. So there's no comparisons to be made. There's no measuring a favor based on the size of people that we're called to influence, nor the size of the platform we have. God doesn't measure. Don't look at what other people are doing. Look at what God is calling you to do, what you are to offer. Okay. So let's talk more about how we respond to the love of God and his romance of us. And first, let me unpack the word romance a little bit, because I'm not talking about white tablecloths and candlelight, but to be romanced means to be wooed. It means to be drawn into. The official definition is to romance someone means to try to influence or curry favor with especially lavish personal attention and gifts. Curry favor. John romanced me 
when we were dating. He pursued me. One night when I came out of my waitressing shift, I found a little piece of paper tucked under my windshield. It was a poem that he had written to me. (laughs) I was undone. I've saved it. Of course, I mean, come on. John and I lived apart for the first two years of our relationship, and he wrote me letters. And you bet that I have saved most of those as well. Dear ones, God has written us the most expansive and beautiful love letter that could ever be written in his word, in the gospel, in the display of his splendor expressed in the scripture. Another thing John did for me while he was romancing me to win my heart, which honestly he had already done, But he carved me a heart out of manzanita wood to wear as a necklace. It's about three quarters inches high. It's smooth, flat wood, beautiful. It's intricately crafted. And I knew it took him many hours to create and much care. I love it. Of course I still have it. It's a treasure to me. What has God made for you? What has he crafted with care and intense attention? Well, God has made all of creation to take your breath away and reveal his beauty. He captures our hearts through everything available to him, and everything is available to him. I love so much about creation. I love wildflowers. I love water. I love the sound and sight and feel of it. I love to be near it, on it, and better yet, in it. I love the fragrance in the air after it rains, and I love the sound of the rain against windows and on rooftops. I love the sound of laughter and the sound of the wind rushing through the leaves of a tree, both with power and with gentleness. I love the wind. I love the mountains, the fragrance of pine, I love the oceans and the smell of the sea. I love so much of what he has created, and he uses it all to move my heart towards him, to woo me to him in gratefulness. I want to dive into the beauty. I want to dive into the one who created it. What do you love? What do you love? Take a moment. Think of it. Now consider that these things, these places, these experiences are love letters sent to you by the one who crafted you with care and loving attention in order to bring you life and hope, to bring you to him, to curry your favor, to reveal to you his passion and love that is just for you, to romance you. He is romancing our hearts away from the things that we so easily grasp to bring us comfort, safety, and a sense of belonging so that we come to know Him as our comfort, our safety, and our true home. He doesn't merely bring us home. He is our home. We are being romanced by the King of Kings. He is lavishing personal attention on you. He is and has given you the greatest gift of all in his son, in his pursuit and rescue of you, in his commitment to your restoration. And he has and continues to do so, speaking words of his undying affection of you and speaking to you of who you truly are to him. May you be reminded today in him, is life. He is our life. In him, we rest in who we truly are. And you know, and are increasingly believing that you are who he says you are. Period. End of sentence. Your identity is not up for grabs any longer. It is not up for anyone else to bestow. Your past doesn't dictate it. Your relationships don't either. Words spoken, names given, things that happen to you or by you even don't know. You are only who God has declared you are. You are his beloved 
chosen, adored one. It is done. As Christ said from the cross, it is finished. God loves us. He wants us to love him in return. He has romanced our hearts. Could it be that he would like us to romance his heart? He would. What would it mean to romance the king? What would take his breath away? Well, he has told us. He says in the Song of Songs again, you have captured my heart. My sister, my bride, you have captured my heart. With what? With one glance from your eyes, with one strand of your necklace. Captured my heart is also translated as you have emboldened my heart. You have given me courage. With one glance, even from our weakened state, even in places we are struggling to believe in, we flick our gaze his way and it ravishes his heart. That's what it says in earlier translations. You have ravished my heart. To ravish is to fill someone with intense delight, to enrapture. One glance of our eyes has captured him. One glance has brought him delight. If but a portion of our glance so overpowers him, what will be the effect of the whole blaze of our affection? The song says, the song of all songs, the best of songs says that with just one strand of her necklace, she has ravished his heart. What is this necklace she wears made of? Well, they are the ringlets of gold that beautify her. They are the attributes of God that she carries that are her adornment. She ravishes the heart of her beloved with just her fleeting moment of offering mercy. With her offering to others, her hard-won, godly wisdom. With speaking truth in love. She reflects her beloved by being like him by being increasingly transformed into his likeness, which is her and our destiny. Out of her eyes, she reflects him because his spirit indwells her. She has dove's eyes. She reflects him in her character, in the way she lives. His attributes govern her life. She has surrendered to him, yielded to him. And one moment of her yielded life in love undoes him as does yours. I love the poem Indwelt, and I've shared it before, but it's worth sharing again, so here goes. Not merely in the words you say, not only in your deeds confessed, but in the most unconscious way is Christ expressed. Is it a beatific smile, a holy light upon your brow? Oh no, I felt his presence while you laughed just now. For me, t'was not the truth you taught to you so clear, to me so dim. But when you came to me, you brought a sense of him. And from your eyes, he beckons me. And from your heart, his love is shed. Till I lose sight of you and see the Christ instead. That's by A.S. Wilson. And oh, friends, the joy that brings him. It's a stunning thought that we can romance our king, that we can bring him delight. Dear ones, you do. You ravish his heart. You can romance your king by your life lived in a moment-by-moment intimate union with him, intimate, close, under the shadow of his wings. To be under his shadow, you have to be very, very close. And we can become a Bethany. So what do I mean by that? Well, Bethany, you remember, is where Mary and Martha lived. They were disciples and friends of Jesus, and he loved being there. Bethany means a place of delight, a resting place for the heart of Jesus. It means a favorite place. You are Jesus' favorite place. You can be a resting place for him. Dear ones, You come to know Jesus well in a face-to-face relationship, in close proximity, not from far away, 
but also it's in the reflection of his gaze that you come to know yourself as well. And in order to see that reflection, you need to draw close. James 4.8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In that nearness, from that access, our faith increases and we rest in the truth that our identity flows from God and that brings him so much joy. It's in the presence of God that we learn who we truly are. And as we enjoy the gaze of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, we receive the impartation of identity. You know this, yes and again, we are who he says we are. And in his presence, we begin to believe it. Your identity is sought after, beautiful one. It is, I belong to the Lord. It is, I have been bought with a price. I walk with a dignity bestowed upon me that can never be taken away. It brings our God such pleasure when we believe him. We romance his heart by our faith. And from that faith flows a life of surrendered partnership with him. Friends, as children of the living God, we are royalty. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms, at one with him, connected. We can be secure in our hearts, at rest in who we are. Our identity is intact. We live in a divine partnership. We are his workmanship, created in God's very image, called to co-create with him. We are predestined to govern, to release truth, to release power that will set captives free. And it brings God such delight when we trust him. Remember, our identity rests on our Father and what He says, what He has determined, what He has declared, and He will never change His mind. As we delve into the art of romancing the King through our steadfast focus, our soul rests in who He is and in who we are, and a realm of authority beyond the ordinary unfolds. Because our identity is the source of our authority. Our spirits are seated with Christ right now. In Ephesians 2, 6, past tense, we are ascended with him. We are seated with him. So choose to believe it. Rest in the truth. Rest into Jesus and his divine perspective as revealed in the scriptures. God gets divine expression as we come into agreement with his perspective. Let him convince your heart again that he is love. You are loved. He is peace. We have peace. Lean into the truth. We live from our identity. And we are meant to walk in union with Christ, to know him, to know him by experience. We're meant to come into his presence boldly, to reign with him, to walk with and in his power by his strength and presence within us. We wield the armor of God. We're called to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, to operate with the spiritual gifts and edify, encourage, and build up the church, to destroy the works of the evil one, to bring the kingdom of God's. Beloved of God, a heart surrendered in unwavering devotion wields a power beyond measure. Just as Esther's devotion acted as a catalyst for divine intervention, your own unwavering commitment possesses the same potential, and it all flows from intimacy. It all flows from love. It all flows from our desire to love our God in return. Yes, we love him. We love him in response to his great love for us. So how do we get this right to live in intimacy with Jesus? How do we obtain our privileged position to come close? How was our identity bestowed? How did we obtain all this authority? Remember, we received it through the cross and death of Jesus Christ. 
through the forgiveness of our sins, through our being raised with him and seated with him in the heavenly realms, it is ours because of grace. It is the free gift of God, not earned, but given. Even our faith is a gift. We were given it because of the great heart of love that beats within our King, from the passion that flows from his heart. God wants us to come close into his presence. The Hebrew word for presence means face to face, breath to breath. This holy intimacy, this profound dignity, this honored position was won for us by the one who is always and ever moving on our behalf. Oh, let's actively love him in return. Let's turn our gaze his direction. Let's trust him. Let's believe him. Let's then romance his heart. To close our time together, I want to have with you just a brief and simple time of a guided encounter with his heart. So take a moment and settle in now. And if you're in the midst of work or driving, just pause this here until you can get, oh, five minutes alone and quiet. Okay, so now just just get comfortable. Breathe in a few deep breaths. Stretch. Oh, relax. Just settle in. Lord, we pray, ignite our hearts with faith that we might encounter you and receive your lavish love. Deepen our faith. I'm going to speak and pray now in the first person. So just agree with me by faith. God, right now, I choose to rest in your faithfulness and gaze upon your face. You are faithful even when my faith is wavering. Unwavering God, I want to enter into your presence. I long to be face to face breath to breath. I breathe you in. Just take a couple deep breaths. I am tuning in to your presence that indwells me. You take up residence in my heart. You are preeminent to me. I once again give you first place in my life. I yield all that I am to you, leaning into your strength and resting now in your love. I release all that I carry into your strong hands. I release everyone and everything to you, entrusting it all to your care. Just name what you need to release, your family, your situations, your work, your relationships, your concerns, your hopes, your fears, everything. I release everyone and everything to you, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Father. Oh, Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, would you right now escort me more deeply into Jesus? I sink down into my heart to be with you in an intentional way. I sit down on the inside. I rest in you. I am becoming aware of your presence. I tune in to being saturated with your love. I am yours, Jesus. I am yours and you are mine. And right now in this moment, I just want to tell you again how much I love you. 
take time in your own heart with your own words and just tell him. Yes, God. Yes, I adore you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you promise that you are working all things in my life unto good. All things. There is nothing that is out of your purview. I am always in your thoughts. Your thoughts of me outnumber the grains of sand in the whole earth. I'm undone by your attention. I am in awe that I am in your gaze. Beautiful Savior, wonderful God, mighty Father, blessed Holy Spirit, I worship you. I exalt you. Help me to see you with the eyes of my heart. Receive my love in return. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus' warm, loving, gentle eyes are locked on you now. Holy Spirit, help your beloved to see. Help them to feel your presence. Just pause in his presence. Let his love flood your being. Rest in his embrace. Just breathe. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I ask that you would help me to recognize your personal love notes to me that you are endlessly sending in my day-to-day life. And I pray to bless you, to delight you, to romance your heart with my love. Thank you that I get to do that. Thank you that I've been doing that already. Praise you, God. Praise you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Okay, friends. Okay, friends. Yes. Just stay with him as long as you can. Rest in his embrace. You are engulfed in his unfathomable immeasurable, surpasses knowledge, but he wants you to know it. Love. Bless you. I already look forward to our next time. Goodbye for now.